Hello everyone, welcome to C++ Code Answers. I'm Homsaran Peculia and today we'll be working a user-defined function problem. From the beginning of the course we've been using predefined functions such as POW, SET WITH, SET FILL, SQRT and so on. To use predefined functions in a program, you must include the header files. This header file contains the function's specifications via the include statement. For example, to use the function POW, SQRT and other mathematics functions, the program must include hash include CMath. And for manipulation functions such as set precision, set fill and so on, you must use the header hash include iomanip. User-defined functions, unlike predefined functions, do not need for the header files mentioning. After all, we are the authors of these functions, so what compiler would have a header of a function we are just about to author? But when are you to use a function? Well, anytime. Because functions are basically, well, according to how I see it, used to clean a code. They make a code easy to read. Say you want to do a simple addition and multiplication and say maybe division code. You can do that with a function. It is just that instead of having the operations of how to add, multiply, divide inside the main function, you will be having them in their respective functions. Multiplication operations in its function, addition operations in its function and division operations in its function. Let's not get caught up in all that. This is the problem we'll be working on today. Write a function called MALT that accepts two floating point numbers as a parameters. Multiplies these two numbers and displays the results. Include the function written in exercise 4a in a working program. Make sure your function is called from main. Test the function by passing various data to it. So before we move on to coding, let me share this information. There are two types of user-defined functions, a value-retaining function and a void function. A value-retaining function are those which will be having data types and as such retain a value. And as for void functions, there's no return value. And these are the two structures of a code. Just as in mathematics, a function has a name and parameters. Function type is the type of value that the function retains. The function type is also called the data type or the retaining type of the value retaining function. Once a retaining function computes the value, the function returns this value via the return statements. In other words, it passes this value outside the function via the return statement. Before I overload your head with too much information, let's open our IDE and get starting. Like every code, we hash include iStream. Using namespace. So just as before, before we work with any variable, we declare it. That's the same as with functions. For functions, that is called function prototype. Before a function is used on a program, you prototype it. So that when it's called in the main function, it is known just as it has been with variables and we do that outside the main function the function prototype tells the calling function whether the main function or any other function the type of the value that will be formally retained if any and the data type and order of the values the calling function should transmit to the called function the function type refers to the type of value the function retains so we prototype here outside of the main function the type is a float since we are multiplying two floating numbers so our products will be a float a function name and our two floating point number parameters and our main function Let's start working on the function first. That's the easy way of doing things. So let's get out of the main function and go build our malt function. 
this is where the operations of the problem are going to be as i said that a function cleans the code and has the operation in the respective function our function here declaration first we already have the variables to multiply in parameters so we declare the result holder and its assignment is the multiplication of the two parameters and we return in this value the product this is so the main function can access the value stored on the variable product since it's on a different function outside of the main function. And now that's our function melt. And now we go to our main function, the driver of the code. First things first, declarations. And we need the two numbers in the multiplication but we'll just pass them as values so we won't need a variable to hold a value we'll declare a variable to hold the results of the multiplication the numbers multiplied are flowed so is this variable and this results assignment is the multiplication of two numbers but remember we're doing functions meaning no operations in the main function so to do an assignment we'll need the operations in the mouth function so we call the operations by calling the mouth function result is equals to mouth and it has parameters our real values will be 10 and a tree here what we just did is just like saying result is equals to 10 multiplied by 3 just that the operations are in the multiplication function so we just call the mouth function with its real values if we would have put three numbers in the brackets that would be an error because it's declared with two variables and that would be function overloading so yeah and now we just output the results and save then compile and run and there 10 multiplied by 3 is 30 let's try different numbers Eight by five is a forty. Say you are up for a prompt the user for input kind of question. So first thing you'll need to, will be to declare the the two numbers multiplied, their variable holders, and then prompt user input. And now where we had real values, we will replace with the value holder variables, 1 and 2, which the user will have input. And now let's compile and run. I forgot to separate with a comma here. And now you can enter your input from the CMD. 5 by 2 is a 10. And that's it. That is simple, right? <laughs> That's how you can write a clean code with a function. This will be very useful when working loops and switches code which are many in one code. And one will find convenience in reading your code. 
Nonetheless, that's all for me today guys. I hope you do learn a lot from these videos. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up and a subscribe so you don't miss out on any new content and tell a friend to tell a friend about C++ coding and let's all become coders. If you have any problems you should like us to work out here, you can send them to our email address gg.ndhelang at gmail.com Remember that the more you code, the more you fall in love with it and you'll start getting solutions right from your sleep. Like seriously. <laughs> See you in the next video.